All right, so this is another uh, cool little NMR problem. And basically what we're given is we're given a starting material. Uh, some transformation happens. We're not told any information about that. But then we're told that this product, um, that we have this NMR for this product. So we're supposed to basically put this together and figure out, well, what is a plausible structure for our product? The first thing that I would do on a problem like this is I would sort of break down my starting material and sort of think about the different peaks that I would expect to see for my starting material um, and then try to sort of use that information to see sort of maybe what's missing or what's added in in my, my final product NMR. So the first thing I would do is I would sort of go through and draw in. I like sort of drawing in my little protons here. I'm gonna have three protons here. Um, and then obviously I've got my OH proton there as well. And then sort of looking at and thinking about, well, where do these things you know, show up? The first thing, obviously my aromatic region, um, these two protons here, those would be equivalent. So I would see two different peaks. Uh, they should be two, two high uh, doublets. And then over here in my aromatic region, I do see these two high doublets. So it seems like, Nothing is really happening, you know, from this aromatic ring perspective. The other thing that really jumps out at me is this uh, uh, methyl group here. And this clearly is going to be a three high singlet. And I see that here at 2.5. Uh, clearly a singlet, uh, very high. So this is definitely my, my methyl group here. So that's, that's not new. But what is new are these two peaks here. So, um, you know, here and here. These are, are my new peaks. So let's write new. Um, and when I look at these, these two different signals, um, it to me is very clearly that we have something like this, CH2, CH3, that we have an ethyl group. And the reason I'm saying that is that here I see a triplet and it is definitely a little bit higher than my two high peaks here. So it could be a three high triplet. I think that's a pretty good uh, you know, way to label that. We'll, we'll just write that in three high triplet. And then over here, I've got something that's a little bit smaller, which suggests a two high quartet. And a two high quartet and a three high triplet is a very common motif for an ethyl group. So right away, it looks like I'm replacing this OH with maybe an O uh, ethoxide, an OCH2CH3. So at this point in time, what I would do, what I'd recommend, you know, giving a shot, uh, trying out, is basically come up with a plausible structure, and then sort of see where that leads you. See if that makes sense. Um, you know, check it against your actual NMR that you are given. So here, um, and let's go ahead and grab a different color to label our protons. So we'll call these H, 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 H. And then I've got three of them here. And then what I will do, I'll go ahead and label these A, this is gonna be B, C, we'll call these D, and these E. So we've already talked about this ethyl group, so this would be our E protons, our three high triplet, this will be our D protons, a two high quartet. This is clearly our A, th uh, three high singlet, three high singlet, and that leaves uh, B and C. Now, B and C, um, this is a really common mistake that, that people are gonna make in terms of identifying which one of these is B and which one of these is C. We might think that since we see this oxygen group here, that that's gonna withdraw electrons and shift these protons C more downfield. But that is not the case. And the reason for that, I think, is explained by this little sticky note. So, if we look over this, this sticky note, under most common cases, when we see a sigma bonded carbon oxygen or sigma bonded carbon, then this is going to just be an electron with withdrawing group. It's going to pull electron density away because this is going to be a polar bond. And it's going to shift these green protons downfield, right? We're pulling that electron density away. We're de-shielding them. They're going to shift downfield. But when this oxygen is bonded to a pi bonded carbon, we're gonna get an actual electron donating effect due to resonance, right? It's always, the answer is always resonance, right? So if I draw this resonance structure where these electrons move down, form a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen, let's point a little bit more precisely, a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen, that's gonna shift these electrons onto the carbon. That's going to 
donate electron density to these protons, and these protons are actually going to shift upfield. So in my NMR spectrum, I would actually expect these to be C and these to be B um, because of this effect that we're talking about here. All right, so that fits. Uh, I think that this is a very plausible product for this NMR, for this reaction that we're seeing here. Um, and if you have any questions, definitely let me know. I guess I should put in that these are going to be two high doublets. And they're going to be doublets because, you know, B is going to be split by C, C is going to be split by B, um, and it's just one proton on the adjacent carbon, so it's just going to split into a doublet. So two high doublets, um, and that should be it.